my gosh. Yes. Yes. New dragon. Hold on. See this back here? New challenger approaching. Yeah, that's a sign of we finally got a new dragon. After eight episodes, eight long episodes, we finally got the fifth dragon. Now, I don't want to spoil everybody, but for those of, for those of you who read the manga, there's a sixth dragon. But I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mention I'm not gonna mention her name. I'm not gonna mention what she looks like. I'm not gonna say anything. But we have finally got a fifth dragon, guys. Now, episode eight of Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid. The reason I'm hyped about this episode because, oh my God, it has some good, 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 good quality in this, with the with the new shipping involvement and the jealousy and parts I'm really pissed off about. It got me hype. It got me mad and hype at the same time. But I like to discuss an example. So we kick things off with Kana, the adorable little dragon, has you know going on a field trip, so she needs lunchbox. You know, like your average field trip. Lunch, bag, trip, whatever. And then here come Kana and Koyashi going to button heads against each other. And and then you got the judges, you know, Kana being the head judge. You got Fafnir, a.k.a. Sebastian, like, look, what, uh, who cares? And then you got the commentator, which is everybody's gorgeous, babe, milf, dragon of all time, loca. So, yeah, they're judging. And, you know, this room, and looking at them competing, you know what this reminds me of? She'll get you no know, soma, aka Food Wars. But here's the thing: you take the title, you put it with Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid, and the title is the way I say it, it's way. It's, the title is in two ways. You can say Shogeki no Dragon, or Shogeki no Dragon Maid. Either way, it is Shogeki no Soma Dragon Maid. That's what I'm gonna call it. Because they're looking at this, they're competing against food wise things. Doing, making tomatoes, making a dessert, making hamburgers. What the fuck? I'm like, is this Food Wars? This is legit Food Wars. Now, we're gonna move that aside and talk about the new dragon, Elma. Elma right now has gotta be my second or third favorite dragon, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sorry, Taru fans, I'm sorry. I know the Taru's brolic and all, I know she's all pretty and all sexy, but, but Elma, she got legs, like, Big bus and no, not big bus like Loka, but bigger bus than Taru and legs. She has a good body, y'all. I'm telling y'all, a good body. And and the issue's not a big of a deal. I mean, those two are like cats and dogs. Like Kane, for example, she improved it. Those two are like the Naruto and Sasuke. Those two are like Sanji. Matter of fact, better way, Sanji and Zoro. That's how you see it, Sanji and Zoro. The only difference is. Those two, if you put those two together, they destroyed worlds. Like, they showed it. They destroyed three worlds, guys. Three worlds. Three. Do you have any idea how brolic they are now? They freaking brolic. I'm sorry, Goku and Vegeta. I'm sorry. But those two are so brolic, they could destroy a world. So imagine those two actually clash. Destroy a planet. Destroy a planet Earth. We're dead. Those two are brolic. But Elma, being as she's an adorable little dragon herself, she's literally blushing and she can't admit the fact that she's hungry and all that stuff. But let's assure you, this episode was not just about Elma, but we learned more about the factions. Kind of like an organization, like kind of like the Organization 13 or the Itatsuki, um, fairy tale, you know what I mean? Organizations. So there's three types of factions. We got the Chaos ones that's all about destruction. We got the Harmony Dragon, and we got the neutral, the faction that's in a neutral zone. Can't be, can't decide what faction. And for some reason, Elma is the harmony and Taru is chaos. You telling me that sweet, innocent, perverted Yuri dragon is chaos? I don't know, well, I mean, come on, think about it. She is that brolic. So anyway, I did my research on most of that. I did my research on the dragons. So let me let me find it. So let me let me paraphrase this for you. Paraphrase it. Fafnir is chaos, obviously. But Kana? Kana's chaos? Are you freaking kidding me? How can a little sweet innocent dragon be so adorable and she's chaos? 
Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Like, come on. She's chaos? What? And I'm like, wow. And, 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 and here's the thing. Loka, the big-breasted milf dragon, she's in the new, she's in the organization of neither. Like, she can't decide. So I'm like, what? I was like, no way. How can Connor be chaos? She's so adorable. But let's all recap episode two when she fought Con when she fought Taro and the way how they was fighting. She was like a Kamayama ya bull thing. Let's come. Let's just let's just let's just now know that she's chaos. But again, it was about introducing Elma and what she does now. So Elma is working with Kobayashi in her office, and it as adorable as she is, she don't even know how to use a computer. Taro, on the other hand, is just like, okay, I'll fight you, but not here. So why don't we just go to the port? And she's a dick. She's like one of those dicks like, hey, let's go outside. Peace. I'm like, that's some bullshit. You, Taru, you motherfucker. You're like, come on, you did that. I don't know. You played her like that. I don't know. You played her. But how Taru got into the world, how Taru got into the world was just simply, oh, I don't have that. So her way of saying this, oh, I don't have that kind of magic to open worlds. So when... Cole, when Taro opened the world, I went in. I jumped into the wormhole. That's it. I know she's a, she's probably a water dragon, but yeah, I see she's probably a water dragon. But I like to also discuss that Taro is in this kind of a shipping war now. Because right now the fans are nuts now. Because it's not just Taro and Kobayashi shipping, which I know Dojin's hentai books already capped that premiere thing going on, but it's also Kobayashi and Elma because they're both walking together, they're both working at the same office, and now that's how it is. And Taro, as she is, jealous. She's legit jealous. And every time I see Taro and Kobayashi together, I'm like, oh my god, just kiss already. But here's the thing when Kobayashi came back, her, mind you, her knee is on right next on leaning on Kobayashi, so I'm like, by the door, and I'm like, why didn't you kiss? This is your opportunity, but she's jealous. But that's what a dragon me does. And speaking of Kataru, she got so jealous, she did perform a hyper beam attack and knock Elma straight out of the way, like, look like Team Rocket blasting off again with that little, with that blast. <sighs> what can I say? But I want to talk about Shota. Shota, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you know how every episode, like, when they show a scene, they got a little intermission commercial-wise? And I'm like, Sota is, is dreaming, you know, about a giant ball on his face, a big old bear paw that is thing on his face, and then you got this friggin', and then you got a sumo tap thing. So I'm like, you, you idiot. Loka is on you, and you don't have the guts. You don't have the guts to, to, to be happy that? She's on top of you, or your her boobs on your face. Like, am, are you stupid? Take note, guys. I envy Shota, but he's doing some dumb things. He's doing some dumb, dumb things. She's if guys, be honest. If you have a dragon maid, or if you have a sexy dragon, and she's on top of you, or whatever, you need to make a move and don't walk away. But Shota is a dumbass. Look, I, I don't care if he's a kid and all. I would have punched him or stop and say, what are you doing? Then switch. I would have kicked him out of his house and I live with Loka. I know you guys too. I know you guys will. <sighs> well, well, what can I say about episode eight though? Episode eight of Miss Kobayashi features a faction. Let me discuss about the faction. Discuss a new shipping. And Shota's and Shotokan involved. This is what makes Kobayashi great. And fan service. This makes this episode so decent and so lovable that you can't argue what could be what main problem that has in these entire episodes of Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid. You can't find anything to slack about it. But that's it for now. Next week, the school says the school festival where Kana's gonna be in it, and we're finally gonna enjoy it. Her in the sports festival, and where now in their sports festival there is dodgeball. Let's remember that episode before. But that's it for now. So tune in next week for episode 9 of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid.